Well, hello everyone. Welcome back uh, to a quick going to ground. It's been a few days since I posted and uh, thought I'd, I'd just check in with you. And um, we're in one of the uh, regation days of the year, as they're called in the Anglican calendar. And really my uh, favourite bit of the of the the transition between spring and summer and uh, for centuries around the country at this time of year in these few days the parish bounds were beaten really for a, a nearly a thousand years uh, villages in in rural england would uh, would pace around the boundaries of their community get to know their place so to speak and uh, and by uh, remembering rehearsing the uh, the physical landscape markers that defined their their, their communities bounds the rivers the trees the rocks the hedgerows and it until it went into them they 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 beat them with sticks children were sometimes beaten as well to remind them <laughs> key points in the boundaries uh, you may have heard me talk about before um it's an extraordinary practice of community and, and was was really the way that the village communities were mapped here uh until the advent of modern mapping uh, uh, in the end, end of the 18th century, early 19th century. So the Rogation days are uh, an important part of the of of the calendar culturally in 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 a broad sense as well as religious religiously. Um, and and a beautiful day in Wiltshire it is. Uh, uh, still uh, even at um, nine in the evening here in Marlborough, and um, it's been a, a a full few days. I was confirming in uh, Marlborough College yesterday. And talking to the 65 or so young people that were confirmed there about the passage we had in our, re in our service, the Bible passage, where Jesus at the Last Supper promises his disciples the gift of the Holy Spirit and says he'll come and abide with us and make his home with us. And I was sharing with those uh, young men and women the, the, the fears that I had as, as a teenager that more space for God in my life would inevitably mean less space for me, and that if I invited him in as he would like an um, like a tricky house guest if he didn't leave um then uh, that I might find myself rather resenting that shared space, but I tried to explain or express at least how I found that the opposite was the was the case as the years went by, and I found that, that uh, there was more space actually more freedom certainly for me uh with with god consciously in my life and i came to realize that i wasn't just wasn't so much inviting god into my space but that i was always living in a space that was already his and so i have found that a very uh interesting way to to view the world um, not that um, somehow God has to be introduced into an, a, a space that is alien to him, but that we are already dwelling within the, the God's creation. We're in, we're in his, his space. We see, uh, uh, this is Coleridge's point, the poet Coleridge's point, that we see all things in God. We we We... Uh, we dwell within a world that is given to us through the senses he's, he's provided. And um, so he's entirely at home in the world. <laughs> and uh, he's, uh, he's already very welcome, even though he, 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 in the Christian tradition, he asks us to invite him in. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Uh, not because he's not at home already, but because he loves us and, and he takes the form of a humble visitor. Anyway, that might be of interest to you in your own thoughts and reflections. And uh, I'll post again uh, very soon. God bless you, friends, as you go to ground.